Hey guys, so here's another video. Um, we are doing my wrap up for March. I did I actually had a pretty good reading month in March in comparison to February. Um, but I felt ill on like the very last couple of days. I'm currently in the middle of one book. Sorry. Um, which is the Midnight Library. I'm hoping to maybe finish this today because it is actually quite a quick read because not all the chapters are quite long. Um, I was reading the Vampire in the Bookstore but I just couldn't match with the writing style so I didn't have that one. But in terms of my other reading it's actually been pretty good. I was able to get to quite a few books both that were borrowed from the library as well as um, my own physical copies and I guess the first book we can talk about even though I did start it in February I finished it in March and this was Carry On My Love Morale. Uh, this one I read as an ebook as well as an audiobook on occasions it was okay I gave it three stars I didn't have feelings about it and to be honest it only got interesting after uh what was his name it wasn't Simon Snow but that that's the main character <coughs> so sorry but yeah it only got yeah it was Baz the second half after Baz has finally introduced the series like actually physically introduced and not just another character Simon Snow is bitching about um, was when it finally got interesting enough for me to finish. Uh, again, I only gave this three stars. It wasn't that good of a book. Would I continue the series? Maybe, but not right now. Then the next book I picked up and finished was A Diary of Blood. Actually, no one. It was The Divided. Uh, this book I had been saying I was going to read because my mum wanted me to read it to see if it would be something she'd like. Um, in all honesty, I don't think it is. I gave this book three. I also gave this book three out of five stars on Goodreads. Like I want a second book to this, but because it's been at least two, three years since this book was released, I don't think it's going to be getting a sequel. But who knows? I mean, I've seen other books are getting a sequel like now, given the fact it came out years ago. Like J.K. Wilson's releasing a sequel to Girls in Love. So who knows? Then I read A Dowry of Blood, which was a vampire um, novel from the point of view of Constantina. Uh, she was the first Bride of Dracula and uh, we basically see her story um, from when she met Dracula all the way up to after Dracula is killed by her and a few others. Yes, I know that spoilers, but if you didn't see that coming at the start, like she is literally writing a letter to Dracula after his death. So it's not exactly that spoilery. Um, I gave this one five out of five stars. I enjoyed it really a, a lot, um, even if the one copy I had was an ARC variation of it, which I found in a charity store, which was quite funny. Then the next book I was able to finish was A Vile Village, uh, which was the seventh book in a series of unfortunate events series. I also gave this one a three out of five stars, but this is one where I actually thought I was really going to hate it, but then found out I, it was actually okay as a book. Like I enjoyed it more as a book than I did as the show, even though there was parts of the show, parts of the show variation that I actually did enjoy a little bit more than what actually appeared in the book, but who cares. Then the next book I was able to finish reading, um, which actually I started after this next book, which I'm going to talk about, um, is A Roommate with a Vampire. I was apparently in my vampire era, and I still am because I've got quite a few vampire books for next month. Uh, this, so this one I gave 3 out of 5 stars. I was not interested in the romance, I was more interested in the drama that came with the fact her roommate was a vampire and he is from a centuries old family who still like believe in rage marriage stuff like that i was in it for that and apparently there's a se there's like a companion sequel coming out where we follow, follow reginald maybe i'll pick that up but we'll see how it goes then the next book which i started before 
um, my roommate's a vampire, but it just took me so long to finish reading it, was Book Lovers by Emily Henry. Now, I have this thing where I I think it's just a Ryan style. I don't mess with, mess, mesh with Emily Henry for some reason. I just don't find myself liking her books all that much. Um, I gave this three out of five stars. Um, then the final book I read for that weekend was uh, Lore Olympus, Volume 1. This was a book I borrowed from the library. And I gave this one five out of five stars. This was a series that I've been wanting to get into for quite a while. But the books are just so expensive. So I found that my library actually had quite a few of the volumes. So I'm just going to continue the series with reading the volumes there. I also read uh, The Girl from the Other Side, Volume 3. This is another series where I slowly am getting the books um, physically because this is a series I actually do want to own. I gave this one four, sorry, I gave this book five out of five stars. And yeah, um, I was so glad I didn't fully forget what happened in um, Volume 2 because I just wanted to go straight into Volume 3. And I really enjoyed it. And carrying on with the creepy factor, apparently, I read The Haunting of Therese Walker. This was a book I was reading for the Buzzwords uh, challenge, which was to read a book with a character name in the title, or a name in the title at the very least. And obviously this says Therese Walker. This deals with a boy who is dealing with grief over the loss of his father, who he never actually got to say goodbye to. Um, and he regrets quite a lot of stuff happening before that. Um, but he finds himself being haunted by a shadow man when his mom and him go to Brazil. And he basically doesn't... Um, he think, finds the old whole ritual of um, throwing rice outside your house to protect you from evil spirits to be ho hocus pocus. And tosses the rice away, leaving him vulnerable to other spirit to basically spirits. For other spirits to come and basically feed on his grief, which allows him to become a target of the Shadow Man and it carry on from there. I then read volume one and volume two of the Haunted Bookstore uh, Gateway to a Parallel Universe manga edition because there is a light novel variation edition. Uh, I gave both of these four out of five stars. It was so good to be back in this world. Um, I only read the first book because completely forgot what happened in it, not realising that the second book actually had a um, little brief summary of what happened in the second book included, but oh well, I, I was so glad to have reread the first book. Either way, to last so I can reread the second, and I will be getting the third volume because I think there's about four or five volumes with this, and I do want to continue on. Then, while I was at the library, I um, actually sat down and read Lord Olympus Volume 2. This one I also gave 4 out of 5 stars. And you can definitely have, you can definitely see a little bit more history between Hades and a few other characters, as well as Persephone and a few other characters, and see how she actually becomes sort of like part of Hades' employment in the underworld. Um, and I look forward to seeing how this progresses over the next couple of volumes, all of which I will be borrowing from the library. It's, uh, sex, autism and theme parks, riding the neurodiverse roller coaster. This one, it did take me a bit for a while to read, um, hence why there were so many mangas between that and the last um, novel I read. This one I gave 4 out of 5 stars. It is a hard hitting book. It does deal with a lot of hard hitting topics um, surrounding both sex and autism as well as our, um, I guess you could say, I wouldn't say government, but basically uh, how it deals with um, offences even if you never actually went out to intend to do those offences. Um, I'm not going to say fully what any of this, because I think you just need to go into this book not blind, because you basically 
go into this book with a bit of an open mind. I read it, I wanted to read it because it deals with autism and I wanted to see what another autistic perspective was. It was non-fiction, which is probably why it took me so long to finish it, because I can't um, stay focused on non-fiction as well. But I am happy I read it. It doesn't have a review on my Goodreads, but I did enjoy it for the most part. The next book I read was The Gun Call, which apparently is actually getting a second book in the next couple of months. This one I also gave 4 out of 5 stars. And for some reason I must have been sort of like gravitating towards books that deal with grief because this book also deals with grief but it deals with the grief of a of two of um two children and a uncle who is also known as Gup, um which is short for gay gay uncle Patrick. And these children have just lost their mother who was also um Patrick's best friend growing up and he's been asked by his brother who married his best friend to take care to take care of her kids while the father goes into rehab to deal with an addiction. The kids don't know why any of this is, ha this is happening. Gob is also having to basically try and deal with a few other things in between all of this. But it was still a really like heartfelt read. Um, there was a lot of fun moments between Patrick and the kids, as well as him actually learning actually how to be an uncle at the same time because he's been quite estranged from a lot of people. So yeah, it was quite a good read. And then the f it's not really the final book, but it's the final book I'm a, I I have physically read as in today because it is the 31st of April that I am filming this on. That is another manga which is Delinquent Daddy and Tender Teacher Volume 1. Um, so this was just a manga that I had picked up sort of on a whim when I went to um, Forbidden Planet I think once and I wanted something a bit more mature but also something different to what I had currently been reading. And apparently I picked this one. So this one deals with a teacher who um, notices that one of his kids might be um, sort of dealing with some bullying issues and he goes to talk to the dad who um, is being sort of stereo ster sterilised as a punk who the son doesn't really see as his dad. Turns out the dad is actually his teacher's childhood crush um, but he never actually went for it then because of something else that happens when he came out as gay to someone. But it's basically sort of like a second chance now because he's having to teach this father how to actually take care of his kid because he doesn't know what he's doing he's literally just trying his best but he has no idea how to like cook properly he needs a clean environment help with homework he doesn't know how to do all of that he is trying his best but he doesn't know how to do all that so the teacher decides to teach him how to do all this stuff and as a result, this builds a more tender bond between him and his son, but also between the father and the teacher who have finally, re who have actually um, confessed by the end of the book. Um, but yeah, m most of this book is literally just like, I think you could say 95% wholesome and cute with the 5% of Spice being at the very end of the book. Now this is a BL manga, so please be aware, please be advised that in that small amount of Spice you are going to have explicit scenes, um, as is common with BL manga. But yeah, this was really good and obviously I aim to try and finish the Midnight Library, 
which will, ho will hopefully be my final book of April. If not, then that's my own fault. I am still happy with the books I read, which was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. If you include Carry On by Reverend Rowell, even though I did start singing in February. But I still say that's actually a pretty, pretty good number, like 14 slash 15, if we also want to include this as well. So yeah, I that was my reading for the month of April. And we are going to try and start um, May, no, not May, uh, April off uh, with a little bit of a bang. Because this is, I actually have no idea what I filmed now. It's been, I am that like tired and except that I, I don't know if I introduced this as my March TV, as my March wrap up or my April wrap up. So I apologise guys, I'll have to re, uh, re review the footage and if I say April I mean March. This is my March wrap up and we are going to into April. You will have hopefully seen my TBR for April coming out maybe before this video but we shall see how my editing goes. So I'm gonna stop talking now, stop rambling and I will see you in my next video guys. Bye!